I want a peachy. This is a wee follow on video to the video I did on a Mercedes Benz with a, an hour intake leak. And I'm just going to show you a few wee step by step bits uh, just as I go along. And uh, we'll show you what's involved. Okay, this motor might look a wee bit different in here now. It's actually a wee bit brighter looking. And that's because we've removed a hell of a pieces of trim, moulding and uh, plastics. And yes, the wipers are off, the plastic moulding's off, the wiper motor's out, the battery's out, the battery box is out. There's, uh, it's opened the engine bay up pretty well and uh, seriously improved the access. So if you haven't seen the first video, what we're doing is we're changing the intake manifold. And as I said in the last video, the way this engine is packaged is a real pain. And what I mean by that is that if you go to take one part off, that's uh, bolted or it's connected to another part, which is connected to another part, which is connected to another part, which is connected to another part. And you end up taking a whole ball of stuff off. So as you can see, we've taken off this firewall and all the air intake stuff for the up uh, there's for the the heater cabin there that's where the air goes in and it's revealed the actual bulkhead and that is the allow me to get loads of access so the battery's out the battery tray is out and there's a reason for that there's a reason why i took everything off and i disconnected that heater hose at the back of it so that's, that's actually why I had to end up taking all the wipers off and stuff. And there's a big black mold and sits here. So he ended up just stripping the whole lot off. Just, you know, just take the whole thing out. And ended up just taking the wiper motor off. And probably didn't really need to do that. But it just all came out as you take it apart bit by bit. So we're at the stage now. I'm going to lift the EGR out. I'll just show you before I do that main reason why I took that firewall out and uh, it adds on to there and just goes right around the back of the engine right round and clips on in there under, under that so all that's covered in and uh, the reason why I took the battery out and ended up taking the battery tray as well so where the battery sits on is there's a bracket away down here away down low there and to get my hands in between the air conditioning pipes that meant I was able to able to get in there so this EGR then goes around the back there get you into focus on that and uh, there we go that's a top bolt there and there's a bolt below which joins and goes right around the back of the head and that allows you, that allows you to get at it with the firewall out, so uh, there's a bracket. Let me see if we can see. Show you it here. Yeah, that's that bracket down there, and there's a vacuum solenoid away down there. Let's see if you can get you to see that. Get you a shot. Can I can I get you a shot? All right, that's it there. With the vacuum pipes, I had to take it off in order to get out the bolts, which are recessed way up in here up in there so it's in behind that flange there and there's another bolt as well there's a bracket that goes on let me see see where that bolt hole is there's a bracket that's on there uh, there's a bracket on there and let me see if we can get you in here now there's a bracket on there below so that is the EGR ready to pull out but it's not as simple as that. This sort of, you know, the electronics of the EGR is sort of upside down. So that's that's the motor, and that's what you would normally see is the black plastic of the head. It's that's that's upside down. And the other thing about it is, is there's a wee spud. Oh, no, not the camera. Okay. So this is in this tight here. So there's a wee spud on the EGR. I don't know if you can see it or not on the flange. So that, so it has to go sort of that way a wee bit, not not very much, 
And what impedes that is it's touching the, the high pressure line there. But if you lift it up, it just about clears it. And uh, this, this vacuum line, there's a camera away again. This vacuum line here, then, so we loosened that up and I had to bring it around the, the back of its normal bracket so it clears it. So I'll just show you, I've already taken this off and I just set it back down again just to show, just for the, 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 the video here. And uh, we'll lift the EGR off. Okay, here we go. Now you might be able to hear me if I'm talking, so don't worry about that. There's nothing to hear anyway. So, there we go. Lift her off. And there we go. All in one piece. So there you go. So that was obviously a setup there. Uh, right at the bottom, uh, you know, that in reality won't happen. You have your multi-plug, so you can get it up so far and you have to kilter it up. And you get your hand, you the reach under, and you, you disconnect the multi-plug. So there's absolutely no chance of getting onto that EGR uh, if you want to test it, back probe it or whatever. You know, you need to get onto it further up the loom and identify the wiring. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's the EGR is just basically wrapped around that. And this particular car is a blue motion. So... Any of the guys that have maybe done something similar to this, it may be slightly different because there is a swirl flap motor on the on the intake manifold. So you can see the EGR, you know, it wraps around, takes up this whole area here, and the upside down motor resides in this sort of now that we have a recess. And this is the swirl flap motor here. And I can actuate it with my with my hand there. So that's in behind there. We have the high pressure feed here that's bolted on to that sword flap motor. And this mono the this job is to take the manifold off. So you know that'll all have to be loosened off. This wiring loom is proven to be a pain because I'll just get you in the shot on that. It's captured here where it goes down and connects onto a lot of sensors and plugs and stuff. So you can't really lift this off. And what I could do is take this cover off and, uh, you know, sort of see if it'll split. Uh, the ring's all cable tied and stuff like that. I mean, snapping all them. But if I have to do it, I have to do it. I'm going to try and see if I can get away without doing all that. Uh, carry on, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think next we'll take that bracket off there. That should come out all right. If, if, I, got it, if I got it sort of loose. And I might be able to release it here down below this this uh, this solenoid here it looks like it's for the heater hose and maybe for the climate control or something that's the type of what it looks like anyway and uh, we may be able to release it down there where it's clipped in and get a wee bit more movement on it so there we go and uh, that's it for now and uh, we'll take another couple of recordings if further on I get well, here we are a wee way later, and the manifold is off. And there's where the boost pipe comes up in. And yeah, need to clean that up a bit. So to prove our my diagnosis then, uh, we do have a telltale sign here. Now, the first video I did, there was a lot of guys in the comments, a couple of guys said about, you'll probably find this will have a broken bolt. That's a common problem here. and. I sort of knew about that, but my endoscope wasn't really showing it coming out, you know, you know the smoke coming out of the the face of the manifold of the, the, the cylinder head. So if I have a wee look, I'll get these pipes, I'm trying to hold these pipes in that bit of wire out of the road there. So yeah, if I have a look at that oil cooler there, we can see a big black mark on it there. But if you look there, it doesn't go, the black, the black mark where it's been coming out of the manifold, you know, it doesn't go right over to the cylinder head. And there's the camera away again. I don't want to get you in again. So it doesn't uh, go right over to the cylinder head, the black staining. So it's still sort of, that's still pointing me towards it's coming out from this, you know, somewhere about the center of the underside of the manifold. That's where the leak is. 
So there's quite a bit of removal there, I can tell you. There's a million vacuum hoses. And uh, I don't know how many connectors have disconnected. But anyway, uh, the owner arrived with some new parts that he got from Mercedes. And these are genuine Mercedes parts here. So that's our new manifold. Now, the owner paid that himself. He has a receipt. He showed me it. But uh, please do not ask how much that was. It was dear enough, I can tell you. That was straight out of Mercedes. The guy actually opened the place up for him. And he told me there was no cars in the place at all. No cars in the forecourt. And the workshop was closed. So, there you go. This... There's a part number there. Now, I'm going to tell you the price of this. This was £30 plus fat. Out of mark. And that's our new fuel filter housing. And the big difference, there's three holes in it. Although, you don't use that. There's one. Of the, you know, there's only two holes in the head. And you don't use one of them. And you get a couple of bolts and a new wee clip. Because there is a slight difference in it. But this is our replacement part for the one over here. And if I have a look at this one. This is the one that was on the car. It wasn't leaking, but it was showing signs that it was about to leak. So what happens with these, I'll just put that down there. Right, you can stay there. So what happens with these here is uh, that bit there breaks off, or that inside bit breaks off. It breaks at bottom anyway, and then that dislodges that seal, and then whenever that happens, the water just flies out of it. So Start back again. Um, so there is only two bolt holes in the cylinder head, and there's three in that new one. It's just this flange is just a lot beefier, and th there's a, another slight difference. You can tell the difference. The new one doesn't have that bolt hole, and they supply a new style wee clip for uh, I think it's for the fuel pipe to clip on somewhere. But it's essentially the same thing. Now what that actually is is that's the area that is. It's a fuel heater. So your coolant passes where your fuel filter sits in and stops the uh, fuel from frothing up. Keep the fuel nice and warm. But, of course, that'll only happen whenever the car's up to temperature. I don't know anything I'll show you. Uh, a wee tip of the day. That there came out of, of this bit here that goes onto the, onto the, house, onto the uh, manifold. Your, your boost pressure sensor goes in there. And that bit there goes in there like that. You know, it goes up into the EGR, so that's what the EGR puts through. That was like a tennis ball of carbon, and I had it cleaned up. It was just a complete mess. And that black, oily carbon, it just gets everywhere, and you'll walk it in all over the place. So was this. This was all carboned up too, but it isn't anymore. And the way I clean these things is jet hose in a petrol station stick two quid in it and uh you yeah you, you give them all the carbon but you hose it all hose it all down their drain like you know and uh because that is just a mess to do it in your own premises and uh if you think about putting petrol in it or anything like that, you're there for ages so you just blast it with a, with a power hose uh there's the state of the end and intake flap some people call it a throttle bunny but it's not a throttle bunny and uh can't power hose that because it's uh it'll just wreck the electronics probably so uh, that'll be a manual cleanup there's our egr now i was saying earlier on there the egr sits upside down that's the the normal side you would see in a lot of cars and you don't see it because it sits like that on the engine so what I'll do is I'll split it here and I'll give I'll give the the, the electric electrically actuated valve a bit of a scoot and carb cleaner in there. This this flap here is nice and free and uh, I can see in there it's actually not too bad. So what else am I gonna show you? Oh yes. Is our diagnosis correct? Well this is my attempt at trying to smoke it. And uh, it didn't work because uh, there's all sorts of things in the road protruding and I've tried 
a glove plastic bag to try and seal it there so it's not really working but uh, I can show it I did try something else not with the smoke the smoke just flies out you know here between the bits of wood and lead to anywhere it can get out you know so this uh, as I said before in the previous video it's a very subtle leak and there are no bolts broken all those bolts are grand this is the underside of the manifold and so no bolts found broken at all where's the other one there's the other one there's the other one there right so i said it seemed to be a hard end crack coming from the center of the manifold and there it is if i can get you in the shot with that there's the crack so the crack goes right round and round in this recess here so we're going to blow that air into it right so here's my setup or then drill the hole in a bit of wood there where uh, one of the intake ports is and uh, I'm going to stick it in there and we're going to give it a blast and you can see nothing right oh, it's, it's Bit of squirty soapy water on it there. Soapy water on it there. And uh, we'll give it an argo. So, let me get to the end now a bit closer. Okay, here we go again. You can see the crack a bit clearer now. Hey, let me see. Now it's got a bit of a wash. Well, I think that's pretty conclusive. So there we go. Right, okay, just just a, a one wee last thing to wrap this up. Because uh, I have to put this thing back there again here. Okay, these bolts, a lot of guys, and it is known that these bolts are found to be broken. And the, the thread side of the bolt is still in the head. And you can normally just, you know, screw them out uh, along those pliers or something. And that causes, uh, that's a big problem, that causes the intake leak. Not so in this case. However, uh, these bolts, if you do have one that the bolts, you know, one of the bolts have broken, and it's usually either that one or that one, the end one or that one there. Um, these bolts are in the manifold. As you notice, these are still in there. And, well, they're tight because they're clumped with this bit of wood. But uh, these are part into the manifold and you can't really take them out so I don't know whether maybe guys have you know forced them out or you could you could probably take them out and stick an hard bolt on it I don't know but uh, the thing with these bolts these bolts are stretch bolts so because of this known problem of snap bolts I looked up the Mercedes uh, information and these bolts according to that are tightened to 15 newton meter plus 60 degrees now that is the original torque spec and you know we're finding these bolts are they're either over tightened at the factory or you know they're not updated they seem to me to be very you know very small the next sort of size up would have been would have been better to hold this manifold on so i think uh, i think they've they've uh, made a boob there anywho what i'm going to do what i intend to do i'm going to tighten these to like 15 newton meters and just a wee nip up from that just to get the stretch on it um you know uh, I'm, I'm not going to do the the 60 degrees which uh is just shy of a quarter turn it's it's not very much like but uh you know it doesn't seem to be very much at all in fact but uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna swing on them by any means so it's just a wee point to note that uh if you if you do come across a job like this uh these bolts are known to be found snapped in the cylinder here uh, you know the thread remains in the cylinder head and then this bit here you just pull it out your hand and that's the cause of your problem not so in this case not so at all because there is clearly a crack in that center port and that's what we saw on the previous video on the on the uh, endoscope footage and the smoke found that uh, just a, a hurling crack around the circumference of that, that mold line there so yeah so there you are don't know how that happened, but there you go. How long did I get up? <laughs> right, so a bit of a clean up required. Clean that uh, our intake flap and uh, clean up this head of this engine. 
and uh, start getting her back together again. So, yeah. So the owner was in and he seen his car in this state. He called in with those parts and uh, his first question was, how do you know what way that goes back to Eller again? Do you take photographs or what do you, how do you know what goes where? And I says, you just know. Okay, on that note, thanks very much for watching, as ever, and all the best, and bye-bye.